So this morning, as mentioned earlier, I'll be talking about the topic on seizure and forfeiture. This topic is medyo mahaba to, but I've only I've only decided to discuss those which are more important and which some of our students feel complicated. Hindi lang hindi nga lang yung Facebook status niyo yung complicated, pati na rin yung topic on seizure and forfeiture proceedings. But we'll try our very best to make it simpler for you to understand the complicated provisions on seizure and forfeiture. In the Zoom meeting room, we're already 363. So again, thank you so much po sa lahat na nag-a-attend, those who are joining us through the Zoom meeting. So I'll just stop my video para you can see the entire screen, okay, the entire screen of my presentation. At the end of the lecture, we expect our learners to be able to, number one, appreciate the nature of custom seizure and forfeiture proceedings. Ano ba yung custom seizure and forfeiture proceedings? Is this a criminal proceeding? Will the decision in the custom seizure or in the, in the forfeiture case result to the imprisonment of the importer or of the customs broker? Or will this proceeding only affect the goods subject of seizure and forfeiture under customs laws? Next, identify the procedures in customs seizure and forfeiture proceedings. Saan ba nagsisimula yung lahat? Ano ba yung mga offices within the Bureau of Customs that have a role to play in the seizure and forfeiture of imported goods? Ano ba yung steps na kailangan gawin ni importer? Ano ba yung mga kailangan isubmit ni importer or ni customs broker or yung owner ng imported goods? Ano ba yung mga remedies available to the aggrieved parties concerned? Third, we will try to explain the concept of automatic review. Uh, this is a provision in the CMPA that whenever the decision of the district collector is adverse to the government, that means it is favorable to the importer, then automatic review comes in. So let's discuss that. Ano ba yung automatic review? And lastly, identify the available remedies which are administrative and judicial in nature that an importer or the owner of the goods can avail of in case of a decision not favorable to that party concerned. Are we ready? But before we proceed, I just like to ask a few questions from you so that I would know the profile of our participants. So I'm launching, can you see on screen the poll? Can you see it on screen? Nakikita nyo ba sa screen? Oh, sorry. You can't see on screen. Sige, let me just check again. Ha. How about now? Can you see on screen? May nakikita ba kayong poll sa screen? Oh, perhaps may problema. Sige na lang, ganito na lang. I'd like to ask you, can you share to me if you are a BSCA student, if you are a CBLE taker, are you a practicing customs broker, are you a... Are you a member of the faculty of the schools offering customs administration? Are, or are you an employee of the Bureau of Customs? You can use our chat box to provide your answers. Oh, 
Okay, most of our participants are BSCA students. And I truly appreciate Emilio Aguinaldo College Manila for initiating this type of webinar. I saw some of your responses earlier. What are you expecting from this webinar? You mentioned to learn more about this topic, to be able to understand the complicated provisions on seizure and for teacher. We will try our very best to accomplish that or to meet that expectation. So we have here our law, the law that we're studying on customs and tariff administration in the Philippines is the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, other or Republic Act number 10863. Republic Act 10863 was passed in 2016 and took effect on June 16, 2016. The CMTA has 315 sections and divided into 18 titles. Our topic this morning falls under Title 11, Administrative and Judicial Procedures. Title 11 has various chapters, Chapter 1, Advanced Ruling and Dispute Settlement, Chapter 2, On Protest, Chapter 3, Alert Orders, Chapter 4, Seizure and Forfeiture, Chapter 5, Appeal in Protest and Forfeiture Cases, Chapter 6, Abandonment, and Chapter 7, Other Administrative Proceedings. But for this morning, we will only tackle on these three chapters. Alert orders, seizure and forfeiture, appeal in protest and forfeiture cases. You might ask, sir, ano bang relevance ng mga topics na to in the CBLE? Kasi ang title ko kanina, What Future Customs Brokers Should Know on Seizure and Forfeiture Proceedings. So let's see the outline of the topics under customs laws, rules and regulations, ethics and customs broker practices. Ilan subjects ba ang meron sa CBLE? For our CBLE takers here, for our future customs brokers preparing for the CBLE, how many subjects are there in the customs broker licensure examination this coming November 8th and 9th? Can you tell us? Can you share to our students? Okay, there are four subjects. You are correct. What are the four subjects? We have number one, customs laws, rules and regulations, ethics and customs broker practices. Number two, we have customs documentation, practices and clearance procedure. Number three, tariff laws and international agreements. And subject number four, practical computation and tariff classification. So those are the four subjects in the CBLE. Our topics this morning are part of the subject customs laws, rules, and regulations. So ito yung distribution ng topics under this subject. We have customs administration essentials, which comprise 40%. Administrative and judicial proceedings comprising 40%. And nandito yung topics natin. That those are listed as number three, alert orders. Number four, seizure for feature and authority of the commissioner. And number five, appeal in protest and for future cases. So knowing these three topics would somehow help you. They would somehow help you in answering the questions on the subject customs laws, rules, and regulations. Whenever I discuss the topic on seizure and for future, I usually start with the introduction of important concepts. Because these concepts would help you better understand the provisions on seizure and forfeiture. So let's start with the definition of the term jurisdiction. Maybe some of our reviewees here or some of our students would be able to tell us the meaning of jurisdiction. What is jurisdiction? We are already 406 in the Zoom meeting room. So I'm expecting at least um, ten percent of you would share to us what do you understand by jurisdiction. So, what is jurisdiction? Can anyone share to us what is jurisdiction? You can use the chat box, or you can unmute yourself if you want to speak and be heard on what do you understand by jurisdiction. Okay. Yes, jurisdiction is a power or an authority. 
and this power or authority is vested by law. For the key, in the case of the Bureau of Customs, as far as seizure and forfeiture proceedings are concerned, this authority is vested by the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. And this authority or power is exercised by a court or an administrative body. In our case, the administrative body being referred to is the Bureau of Customs. And this authority involves taking cognizance of a case. That means assuming the case, taking on the case, accepting the case, hearing and trying the case. So later on, we would understand that there is a hearing procedure, merong order of hearing that the district collector or the law division will issue as notice for the parties concerned. Deciding the case, the district collector under the CMTA is the person authorized to decide on the forfeiture case. Enforce its decision. So it's the power of an administrative body vested by law to take cognizance of a case, hear and try the case, decide and enforce its decision. Let us, ex let us explain this in a simpler manner. Sige. Sa ating mga students dito. Bit, uh, let us say, for example, there is an inclement weather. Hindi maganda yung panahon. Bumabaha na yung lugar ninyo. It's raining cats and dogs. Napakalakas ng ulan. Who between you choose? Who between the two will you believe that there is class suspension? If it's the security guard of your school, who, say, who will say there's no class? Or will it be the dean or the program chair of the college or of the of the course? Sino yung papaniniwalaan mong merong kapangyarihan na mag, magsabi na walang pasok? Is it the dean or the security guard? Okay. Many of you answered it is the dean. Bakit ang dean? Why is it the dean? Why not the security guard? Eh, siya naman yung tagabukas ng gate. Kung walang security guard, walang tagabukas ng gate. Kung hindi bukas yung gate, hindi kayo makapasok. Okay, that's correct. Reinen, the dean, between the dean and the security guard, we will believe the dean because the dean has the authority. The dean has the power. The dean has jurisdiction. Okay? So that's how we simplify the meaning of jurisdiction. O oh, meron ding sagot dito. Pwede din yung security guard, sir, kasi he follows the dean. The dean delegated the power to announce that there is suspension of classes. Jurisdiction may either be original. It is original when we say it is for the first time. Original sa simula. Sa kanya nagsisimula yung buong proseso. That is original jurisdiction. Vis-a-vis -vis appellate jurisdiction. Sa appellate jurisdiction, meron ng decision. Tapos gusto ipareview yung decision. Kung yung decision bang ibinigay o yung decision ni render ng isang tao, ng isang opisina, ng isang hukuman ay naaayon sa batas. Is it lawful? Is it in accordance with the provisions of the law? Did it follow the due process requirement? So kapag gusto natin i-review yung isang decision, that is an exercise of appellate jurisdiction. It can also be exclusive when that power is exercised by only one office to the exclusion of all others. Walang ibang pwedeng humawak ng kasong yan kundi siya lang, kundi yung opisinang yan lang. Or concurrent, hindi lang isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, silang opisinang pwedeng humawak, mag-decide at mag-enforce ng desisyon sa kasong yan. So, yung exclusivity, we can say, we can relate that to dating. Okay? For example, siguro merong ilang dito sa inyo nag-date na, may mga kasintahan na, may mga partners na, in a relationship na. Yung iba nga, complicated yung status. So, if let us say A and B are exclusively dating, Pardon for the for the typographical error that should be exclusive. So if A and B are exclusively dating, 
that we say na walang ibang kadate si A kundi si B at walang ibang kadate si B kundi si A because A and B are exclusively dating. But if we say concurrent, hindi lang si B yung kadate ni A. Meron din siyang ibang kadate. Okay? Too many to mention, ika nga. Sino ba yung mga kadate mo ngayon? Too many to mention. So that is an exercise of concurrent jurisdiction. Hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa, pwedeng tatlo, apat o lima pa. Yung may authority vested by law. Medyo familiar yung merong dalawang words dito na medyo familiar sa inyo. Ano ba yung words dito na familiar sa inyo? Ano yung kind of jurisdiction that is familiar to you? Dito sa apat na words na to, yung original, appellate, exclusive, and concurrent. Which of this is or are familiar to you? Sige nga, to our, to our students and civil examinees, which of these are familiar to you? Is it original? Is it Okay, exclusive, original, appellate. Okay. So yung yung familiar sa inyong lahat be the words exclusive and original. Why? Because that is expressly provided under section 202 of the CMTA where the functions of the Bureau of Customs are expressly provided. Under Section 202, Letter J, the exercise of exclusive original jurisdiction over forfeiture cases. Ibig sabihin, ang Bureau of Customs lang ang merong exclusive. Siya lang. Walang ibang opisina. Walang ibang ahensya ng gobyerno. Walang ibang korte ang merong jurisdiction on forfeiture cases. Original kasi sa kanya magsisimula. So, hindi ka pwedeng mag-file muna sa korte. Hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa Tariff Commission when it comes to for future case. Hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa Secretary of Finance. Hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa Secretary of Trade and Industry. Hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa Regional Trial Court because it is the Bureau of Customs that exercises exclusive and original jurisdiction over for future cases. Yung topic natin mentions about seizure. Yung title ng ating lecture today mentions seizure. Ano ba yung seizure? Can you tell me what do we understand by the word seizure? Magkapareho ba yung seizure tsaka forfeiture? Okay, what do you understand by seizure? Yes, seizure is the taking, the actual taking of the goods. Kapag kinuha mo yung isang imported good, kapag kinuha mo yung isang produkto, kapag kinuha mo yung isang container, kinuha mo yung isang sasakyan, that is taking, that is seizure. And why are we seizing the goods? Why are we seizing the particular shipment? Because there is a warrant of seizure and detention. We will know later on that the warrant of seizure and detention is issued by the district collector. And if you can check the warrant of seizure and detention that is addressed to the district commander of the Enforcement and Security Service. Hindi siya naka-address sa kahit sino lang. It is particularly addressed to the district commander of the Enforcement and Security Service Customs Police Division. Why? Kasi siya yung inatasan ng batas. Siya yung si district commander yung inatasan ng CNPA ng Customs Administrative Order Number no. 10-2020 na kunin yung imported goods at ilagay sa custody ng Bureau of Customs. And why are we seizing the goods? Why are we taking the goods into the custody of the Bureau? Because there is a probable violation of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act and other laws. Other laws would refer to laws implemented by the Bureau of Customs relating to the importation of goods. So, pwede dyan yung, yung pinaka-familiar siguro sa inyo, yung batas na nagbabawal, yung commercial importation ng ukay-ukay. Anong batas yan? We are 428 in the meeting room. Napakarami natin. Halos magpa-500 na tayo. 
So can you tell me what law is that? Ano ba yung RA number na yan? Yung nagsasabi na bawal yung commercial importation ng used clothes and rugs commonly known as ukay-ukay. Can our examinees and students tell us? Can you share to the chat box? Ano yung batas na yan? Okay, very good, Jedeline. I think it's Jenilyn Jen siguro. RA 4653. That is the law prohibiting the commercial importation of used clothes and rugs, commonly known as ukay-ukay. For feature, ano ba yung for feature? Magkapareho ba sila ng seizure? Uh, hindi, sir. Bakit? Sa spelling pa lang, sir, hindi na sila magkapareho. Okay, sa, sa seizure, ilang letters ba? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, sa forfeiture, kapangarami. So, seizure and forfeiture are two different terms. They do not mean the same. Okay? In, in seizure, kinuha lang natin yung custody. Kinuha lang natin yung possession ng isang bagay. Sa forfeiture, ang kinuha na natin yung ownership over the goods. That's why in, in seizing the goods, the importer remains to be the owner of the goods. But when goods are forfeited, these become properties of the Bureau of Customs because we are now acquiring the ownership over the goods. This is because there has been established violation of the CMTA or other laws. You are correct, Joseph. In forfeiture, you are losing the ownership of the goods by virtue of a legal proceeding. And that legal proceeding refers to forfeiture proceedings under the CMTA. As a result of the four feature proceedings. Napakagaling naman ng ating mga participants this morning. So ano ba yung nature ng seizure and four feature? Ngayon na alam na natin yung definition ng seizure. Alam na natin yung definition ng four feature. What then is the nature of seizure and four feature proceedings? In one case, the Supreme Court defined or stated that seizure and forfeiture proceedings are not criminal in nature. Hindi sila criminal in nature. That is why if babasahin nyo yung caption ng WSD, Republic of the Philippines versus the goods. Okay? Hindi siya people of the Philippines. Maraming nagtatanong sa akin, Sir, paano ba natin malalaman kung yung isang kaso ay criminal? Malalaman nyo yan sa pamamagitan ng kanyang caption. Yung kanyang title, yung sino yung parties concerned. So kapag criminal case, it is people of the Philippines versus person. Okay? People of the Philippines versus person. Why is it people of the Philippines? Because the case is being brought by the state, by the government representing the people of the Philippines. It is not criminal because the decision in the seizure and forfeiture case does not result in the conviction of the offender. He, meron niyang puma, merong bumisita sa aming opisina kasi nakatanggap siya ng WSD. So, nanginginig yung, yung senior citizen okay? dahil doon sa WSD niya. Sabi ko, ma'am, relax po. Huwag ho kayong mag-alala. Huwag ho kayong mangamba. Bakit ho kayo nandito sa opisina namin? So ang sabi nung, nung client, nung stakeholder, Sir, may natanggap po akong WSD. It's a warrant of seizure and detention. Baka ho arestuhin ako. Kasi ang normal na, na notion, ang normal na pag-iisip natin is that when there's a word warrant, it refers to warrant of arrest. Hindi ho. Yung warrant of seizure and detention is a different kind of warrant. So, in-explain ko sa kanya, sa stakeholder, no ma'am, don't be anxious. Huwag ko kayong matakot kasi yung warrant of seizure and detention ho, ang effect lang niya is kunin yung custody or yung possession ng inyo pong kargamento. It will not result to your conviction. Okay, hindi ko kayong makukulong sa WSD. Nor will it result to the imposition of penalty. Hindi ko kayong magbabayad. Okay? Hindi ho automatic na kapag merong decision yung seizure and forfeiture case ay makukulong yung importer, ay magbabayad ng penalty yung importer. No, because this is a purely civil and administrative proceeding. 
And the primary purpose of seizure and forfeiture proceeding is to enforce administrative fine or forfeiture. Kukunin niya lang ho. Kukunin lang ho sa seizure and forfeiture yung inyo pong kargamento. Kasi yung inyo pong kargamento, the importation or the exportation of your shipment constitutes a violation under the CMTA or under related laws. Okay? So at least clear na sa atin ngayon that the seizure and forfeiture proceedings will not cause the imprisonment of the customs broker or of the importer. Ibang ibang kaso ho yan. In fact, that is a criminal case, a criminal proceeding for smuggling, for violation of Section 1400 or 1401 of the CMTA. Oh, are we all clear? Can I see your emoji, your reactions on screen? Okay na ba tayo? Do we understand? Okay. Okay, very good. So let's move on. Ano ba yung degree of proof? What is the degree of proof required in seizure and forfeiture proceedings? Naririnig nyo siguro sa, sa mga teleserye. Okay, teleserye or sa naririnig nyo sa teleserye or sa movies yung may for example may courtroom scene merong merong kaso tapos binabasahan yung akusado sa kaso at ang pagkabanggit ay this court finds the accused guilty beyond reasonable doubt yun yung lagi natin naririnig guilty beyond reasonable doubt of the crime of let us say murder crime of homicide or whatever Yung sa custom seizure and forfeiture proceedings, meron ding klase ng ebidensya na kailangan isatisfy para maisabi natin na merong violation yung importation. And that degree of proof is substantial evidence. What is substantial evidence that is defined as the relevant evidence that a reasonable mind might accept as adequate to support a conclusion? Ibig sabihin yan, merong sapat na basihan yung Bureau of Customs na isupport yung kanyang desisyon na merong violation yung importation. It does not require proof beyond reasonable doubt. It only requires substantial evidence. As long as merong pinaghahawakang ebidensya Merong pinaghahawakang facts and circumstances, may basihan si Bureau of Customs na merong, merong violation sa CMTA or sa other laws relating to importation or exportation of goods that is enough to cause the that is enough to cause the seizure or forfeiture of the goods. And who has the burden of proof? Okay. Ano ba yung burden of proof? Iyan ho yung duty ng isang party, okay, ng isang tao na ipresenta yung kanyang ebidensya para mapatunayan niya yung kanyang claim. For example, sasabihin ni Bureau of Customs, oh, Mr. Importer, yung inyong shipment, violation yan sa CMTA. Ikaw naman na importer, you present your proof na yung pag-import mo ay hindi bawal, hindi binabawal, uh, hindi siya pinagbabawal ng CMTA. So that is the burden of proof. That is your duty to present evidence. Like for example, uh, sabihin na lang natin na yung shipment ng isang importer ay sinis ni Bureau of Customs kasi walang permit. Ano nga yung four types of goods under the CMTA? Ano yung apat na classification ng goods? Yung ano yung tawag doon sa imported goods na pwede mong i-import ng walang kailangang requirement. Anong tawag doon? Okay, freely importable. You're correct, Joanna. Ano naman tawag doon sa imported goods na kailangan mo ng permit, clearance at license para maku mapa mapapasok mo sa Philippines? Regulated goods. Very good. Ano naman yung type ng goods na hindi pwedeng i-import? In all cases, hindi pwedeng dalhin dito sa Pilipinas. Prohibited goods. Okay. Ano naman yung type ng goods na 
Ayon sa batas, bawal siya. Pero pwede daw kapag merong batas na nagsasabing pwede pala. Restricted goods. Correct. So let us say, for example, regulated goods. Gusto ni customs o sabi ni customs, hindi yan pwede kasi wala kang permit. So, customs seize your goods. Ikaw naman, since you have the burden of proof, okay? You have the burden of proof. Kailangan mong ipakita kay Bureau of Customs na yung shipment mo ay merong permit. Okay? Merong permit. Kasi sabi ni customs, walang permit yan. Oh, yung commodity mo, regulated ng Food and Drug Administration, walang permit yan. Oh. Disease ni customs. Eh ngayon, meron kag permit, nakuha mo yung permit, ipakita mo kay customs. Okay? That is your burden to show proof to the Bureau of Customs that your importation does not constitute a violation of the CMTA. And bakit ikaw yung dapat na magpakita niyan? Because under the CMTA in Section 1123, the burden of proof lies upon the claimant, lies upon the importer. Okay? Merong actual case na nasa nasa port ngayon. Merong na yung Philippine Coast Guard na mga mga considered as ukay-ukay. Okay. Ano yung effect kapag merong na yung Bureau of Customs at hindi nagparticipate yung importer? That would bolster the allegation or the The, the, the allegation of the Bureau of Customs that the shipment is ukay-ukay. Okay. Kasi pwede naman na sabihin ni importer, hindi yan ukay-ukay. Pinili ko yan sa Pilipinas. Ako yung mismong gumawa niyan. Ako yung nag-produce ng mga, ng mga damit na yan. Linagyan ko lang na made in Korea. Nilagyan ko lang na made in, Philipp, made in China or made in Australia. Okay. Pero kapag hindi ka nagpresenta ng ebidensya, If you do not give your counter argument, hindi ka nag-defend na yung shipment mo ay hindi ukay-ukay, then customs, it, then it is said that customs has bull out, merong claim, yung claim na violation siya on customs laws is there. Okay? Kasi hindi mo na-overcome yung, yung burden na dapat mong i-claim na hindi siya violation ng customs. Now, what are the properties subject to seizure and forfeiture under customs laws? Medyo mahaba to. Nasa section 1113 ng CMTA and other provisions of the CMTA. These are imported goods. Okay, kapag in-import mo at merong violation dyan sa section 1113, that is subject to Feature and for feature. Okay? So I won't discuss each and every provision or subsection of 1113. Bahala na kayo dyan. Okay? It's up to you to read the section 1113. Kasi napakahaba niyan, magkukulang tayo sa oras. So pwede yung imported goods yung masis ni Bureau of Customs. Pwede din yung vehicles, vessels, and aircrafts na, na sinakyan noong imported goods. Pwede yung stores and supplies, cargos ng barko, ng eroplano na hindi naman siya subject of importation. Pwede din yung lalagyan, yung packages and receptacles. These are found in Section 1113 and in other provisions of the CMTA. We move to, we have done with the important concepts, we move to alert orders. Ano ba yung alert order? Alert order is a written order. Hindi siya verbal. In fact, there's a form. Merong form yan na sinusundan yung atin pong mga issuing offices. And this is issued by either the Commissioner of Customs or the District Collector of Customs or any other customs officers authorized by the Commissioner in writing. But in practice, ho, yung nag-issue ng alert order ay si District Collector of Customs. And when can we issue an alert order? Pwede ba mag-issue ng alert order si district collector kung yung shipment ay nasa laot pa o nasa himpapawid pa, hindi pa dumating sa port? Can the district collector issue an, uh, an alert order? The answer is? Okay. The answer is an overwhelming no. Why? 
Why is that a no? Because Section 1111 of the CMT requires that the alert order can only be issued after lodgement of the goods declaration. Merong sumagot dito PLCO. Yes. In fact, that is the device used in in cow number, I just forgot the number of the customs administrative order. If wala pang lodgement ng goods declaration, pwede nang mag-issue ng PLCO. Okay? PLC. But alert orders can only be issued after lodgement of the goods declaration and before the actual release of the goods from customs custody. And wakit mag-issue tayo ng alert order because there is a derogatory information that the, uh, this, this is the cow, cow 7-2019, because there is a probable violation or non-compliance with the provisions of the CMTA and all other laws, rules, and regulations enforced by the Bureau of Customs. Bakit kailangan after na ng lodgement? Because it is only when goods declaration has been lodged that we would know the content of the declared content of the shipment. Ang sabi dito, there is a possible non-compliance with customs laws because these contain prohibited goods. Yung shipment contains restricted goods. Yung shipment contains regulated goods or products of illicit trade. Di ba, dinidefine niyan sa section 1111. Ano yung derogatory information? Derogatory information, ang sabi dito, the following shall not be considered as derogatory information. General allegations of undervaluation. Hindi pwedeng sabihin na natin, ah, undervalued yan. Why? What does the law require for it to be a valid derogatory information? The undervaluation must, there must be an allegation that there is a submission of forged or spurious invoice or other commercial documents. Yung general allegation of misclassification, hindi din yan pwede. Ang dapat merong allegation kung ano yung appropriate tariff heading or duty ng shipment na subject of alert. Why is that so? Because wa kung wala pang goods declaration, wala pang declared value. Paano masasabi na undervaluation siya? Paano mo masasabing misdeclared siya? Eh wala pang ang declaration. Paano mo masasabi na misclassified siya? Eh wala pang ang tariff heading. It is only when goods declaration has been lodged that a value has been declared that a description has been made, that a classification has been done, or that the imp or that uh, it can be argued that there is a violation of the customs laws. Kung wala pang lodgement of goods declaration, there is nothing to say that there is misclassification. It is even premature to say that there is this declaration, misclassification, or undervaluation. Kaya hinihintay na mag-issue na bago mag-issue ng alert order there should be a lodgement of goods declaration. Okay, kayo naman yung magsalita ngayon. Let us and try to answer this question. An importation of ceramic tiles arrived at the port of Surigao having received a tip that the importation actually contained rice. The district collector of the port of Cebu issued an alert order on the importation. Is the issuance of the alert order by the district collector valid? Yes or no? Valid ba siya? Okay. Merong sumagot ng no, merong sumagot ng yes, merong sumagot ng maybe. Now, what do you think is the answer? Is it a yes or a no? Or is it a both? Is it an all of the answers or none of the answers? The answer here is the issuance of the alert order is not valid. Why? Because under CMO 7-2018, one of the officers authorized to issue the alert order is a district collector. Yes, tama. District collector yung ano issue But the district collector who issues the alert order must have territorial jurisdiction over the importation. Sa problem, nasan yung shipment? Anong point? Uh, sa ang port ang shipment? Nasa port of Surigao. Sino yung nag-issue ng alert order? District collector ng Cebu. So yung district collector ng Cebu does not have jurisdiction over the port of Surigao. So the alert order is not valid, validly issued. Kasi nga, yung nag-issue does not have territorial jurisdiction. Another problem. 
Let us say the alert order was issued by the Commissioner of Customs. Is it valid? Kung si Commissioner of Customs na nag-issue ng alert order, is it valid now? Do you think it is valid? Okay. Merong sumagot ng yes, merong sumagot ng no. The answer is no. Why? Sir, di ba sir, si Commissioner of Customs, isa yan sa pwedeng mag, mag isa yan sa pwedeng mag-issue ng alert order? Yes, isa si Commissioner of Customs. But remember, Section 1111 and CMO number 7-2018 require that the alert orders can only be issued after lodgement of the goods declaration. Sa problem na binigay natin, walang binanggit na meron ng goods declaration na nailudge. So because there's there's no goods declaration that has been lodged, then it is premature to issue the alert order. Okay. So in a nutshell, okay, in a nutshell lang, overview lang tayo kasi napakahaba din ng topic na to ang alert orders. Ano ba yung procedure? Ano ba yung step-by-step -step procedure doon sa pag-issue ng alert order? Nagsisimula yan sa filing ng goods declaration. Kasi nga sabi natin kanina, we can only issue an alert order if goods declaration has been launched. So kailangan muna merong goods declaration. Kapag meron ng goods declaration at meron tayong derogatory information na merong undervaluation because merong, merong sang sinabmit, yung sinabmit niyang invoice, at commercial documents are fake or spurious, gawa-gawa lang, hindi tunay, hindi totoo, then that is a derogatory information. We can issue an alert order. Or, pwede rin na merong misdeclaration kasi yung declared niya doon na ang idiniklara niya used, pero ang laman, ang suspected content ay brand new. So that is a derogatory information. If meron na tayong derogatory information, then the Authorized officer, the Commissioner of Customs, the District Collector, or any other customs officer authorized by the Commissioner in writing will then issue an alert order. After issuance ng alert order, anong susunod? Inonotify natin yung mga parties involved para sa alert order. Under the CAO, ang kailangan na nating inotify primarily yung importer. Bakit? Kasi siya yung may-ari ng kargamento or the representative of the owner. Pareho dyan yung customs broker. Okay. Or, sino pa? Yung warehouse man, kung nasaan yung shipment. Yung terminal operator, kung nasaan yung shipment. Yung warfinger. Okay? So, marami dyan yung parties, maraming opisina dyan yung kailangan nating inotify. It's mentioned in CAO 17-20. You can also find that in CMO number. You can find that in CMO. Okay, there's a CMO on alert order. That is CMO number 7-2018. After ng issuance, na, after ng notice of issuance of the alert order, we move on to the conduct of examination. Sir, bakit tayo mag-examine? Na nagtatanong, sir, bakit ba tayo mag-examine? Eh di ba sabi natin na merong derogatory information? Di ba sabi natin na merong violation yung kanyang importation? Sabi nga natin merong misclassification? So how do we know if there is indeed misclassification? How do we know that there is indeed misdeclaration? Through the conduct of examination. Buksan natin yung shipment at doon natin makakikita kung meron ba talagang violation. Kung yung diniklare niya niya, kung yung diniklare niyang Used ay talaga bang used or bago? Sabi natin, used. Used vehicle. Used car. Pagbukas, brand new pala. Wala pang uh, napakaliit pa nung mileage na nakaregister sa sasakyan. So there is misdeclaration. And only then, we will know only when we conduct the examination that we would know that there is indeed a violation of the customs law. Now, Ilang oras ba o ilang araw ba kailangan mag-conduct ng examination? Can anyone tell me? Can any one of our participants say kung ilang oras o ilang araw ba kailangan mag-conduct ng examination? Tama, under Section 1111, within 20 hours from the issuance of the alert order, the examination will be conducted. 
conducted. After ng conduct ng examination, anong susunod? So pagkatapos ng examination, doon natin manalaman kung meron ba talagang violation. Kung yung lo kung yung nasa loob na dineklarang used vehicle ay totoo bang used vehicle or brand new. Okay? So magre-recommend na ngayon yung examining officer. Kapag merong violation na nakita, magre-recommend siya for issuance of a warrant of seizure and detention. Or, kung for example, yung dineklara niya, sampung sasakyan lang. Tapos yung laman pala, labing isa. So, it may result to an additional duty and tax. So, pwede din i-recommend niya ni examining officer na magbayad ng additional duties and taxes or if the discrepancy is more than 30%, then pwede mag-recommend mag si alerting officer or examining officer ng issuance ng warrant of seizure and detention. Sir, what if, sir, walang nakitang problema? Yung dineklarang used vehicle, pagbukas, totoong used vehicle. Yung dineklarang ceramic tiles, pagbuta, pagbukas, totoong ceramic tiles. Anong mangyayari? Anong pwede i-recommend ni examining officer? Ang pwede niyang i-recommend is continuous processing or continuation of the processing of the goods declaration and the lifting of alert order. So, kanino niya yan i-recommend? Kay district collector. Okay? Si district collector, dalawa yung pwede niyang gawin. Kung merong kasalanan talaga, merong violation at napatunayan through the examination, then issuance of warrant of seizure and detention. Or kung walang violation, then i-recommend niya yung release, yung continuous processing of the goods declaration and the lifting of the alert order kanino kay Commissioner of Customs. And this is the first example of automatic review. Kailang, kailangan mong i-submit, kailangan ni district collector na i-submit at ipaalam kay Commissioner of Customs yung kanyang recommendation for release because the Commissioner of Customs has automatic review power on this. Ilang oras ba? Merong 48 hours kung non-perishable or 24 hours if perishable goods from receipt of the recommendation si commissioner to render the decision. Either to approve okay, either to approve the the recommendation of the district collector to release or lift the alert order of the goods. At pwede rin i-disapprove ni Commissioner. Pwede rin niyang i-disapprove. Babalik yan kay District Collector for the issuance of a warrant of seizure and detention. So ito yung itsura ng alert order. Kaya sabi ko kanina, alert order is a written order and in fact there is a format for that purpose. So, ito yung alert order form. Yan yung pipirmahan at i-fill out ni district collector o kung sino man yung sino man yung alerting officer. At ito naman yung alert order report form. Ito yung report ni examiner pagkatapos niyang mag-conduct ng examination ng shipment. Okay? So, we move on to an overview of the seizure and forfeiture proceedings. So, kanina, for example, if there's a violation after the examination, nakita na meron talagang laman na hindi dinaklara, then there is an issuance of a warrant of seizure and detention. After the issuance of a warrant of seizure and detention, what follows? Service of the WSD. Bakit merong service? Because this is part of due process. Bakit meron due processor? Because under the Constitution, no person shall be deprived of property unless with due process of law. E siyempre, property yan ni importer, di ba? Sa kanya yan, binili niya yan. E kung isisis yan ni Bureau of Customs, it, it will forfeit ni Bureau of Customs. Hindi na yan sa kanya, di ba? In forfeiture, the ownership is acquired by the Bureau of Customs. Hindi na yung importer yung may-ari niyan. Then that would be a deprivation of his right to property. Kaya kailangan siyang in-notify because that is part of due process requirement. And how do we serve the warrant of seizure and detention? According to CAO 10-2020, which implements the provisions on 
seizure and forfeiture proceedings under the CMTA, yung pag-issue ng WSD, sino ba yung pwedeng mag-issue pala ng WSD? It is the district collector of the port which has jurisdiction over the goods. Ano yung contents ng WSD? Nandyan yung docket number. Nagsisimula yan sa seizure identification case number. Okay? Seizure identification case number. And then yung collection district, yung alleged violation ng CMTA, yung description ng property, yung barko, okay, yung consignee, tapos yung location ng goods. The district collector will issue a warrant of seizure and detention if there is probable cause. Ano ba yung probable cause? These are the facts and circumstances that would lead a reasonably prudent man to believe that a violation of the customs law has been committed. So kung merong violation sa customs law after the conduct of examination, then that constitutes as a probable cause. And if there's probable cause, the district collector will issue a warrant of seizure and detention. Now, as part of due process requirement, kailangan nating i-notify si importer. So there is now service of the WSD. The WSD is directed to the district commander of the ESS Customs Police Division. Yung ESS, yung district commander, has a period of three working days. Three working days from the issuance of the WSD to serve the WSD. Sinong pagbibigyan niya? Yung owner ng goods or yung authorized representative or yung warehouseman or warfinger kung nasaan yung imported goods. After service of WSD, then the ESS will report the, con the service of the WSD. At kukunin na niya yung custody ng goods. Kaya nga sabi natin kanina, yung seizure is the actual taking into the custody of the Bureau. So kukunin niya yung shipment. Okay? Or kung nasa pier pa yan, hindi yan ipapalabas. Okay? Hindi yan pwedeng lumabas. Nandun lang yan sa pier. Iko-cordon yan or ita-transfer yan sa isang security warehouse. Ano yung security warehouse? Ito yung facility ni Bureau of Customs kung nasaan lahat ng mga shipments na naisiz, lahat ng shipment subject of WSD ilalagay ni Bureau of Customs. So kung merong security warehouse yung port, ililipat yung shipment papunta doon sa security warehouse. Sino yung merong custody na ng goods? Joint yan. Joint custody by the ESS and the Auction and Cargo Disposal Division. After the seizure of the goods and taking it in the custody, the district collector will now designate a hearing officer. So, sino yung hearing officer? Isa yung abogado sa law division. So, in our case, uh, I am a hearing officer since I am the chief of the law division. I am also at the same time a hearing officer. Si yung hearing officer ay isang abogado sa law division. But kung walang abogado sa law division at si district collector ay isang abogado rin, then pwede si district collector yung magiging hearing officer. O kung wala talang abogado, magre-request si district collector ng hearing officer from the legal service. Ano naman yung prosecutor? Isa din yung abogado sa legal service under the Prosecution and Litigation Division. Ang role niya, siya yung magpo-prosecute ng case. Diba? Kasi si importer, siya yung magde-defend na hindi violation yung kanyang importation. Sino naman yung mapuprove? Ah, sino naman yung magsasabi na merong violation yung, yung importation? Si prosecutor yan. So ano pala yung role ng law division? Ng law division ng court? Hearing officer. Siya yung magiging katuwang ng district collector sa pag-decide doon sa seizure and forfeiture fees. Now, may designation na, magihear na. Sir, bakit magihear? Kasi nga, part yan ng due process. Okay, due process is defined as the process of hearing before condemning. Okay, you need to hear the person. Bago mo kunin sa kanya yung kanyang shipment, papaliwanagan, pa, bigyan mo siya ng pagkakataong magpaliwanag kung bakit nangyari yan. Kung totoo bang violation, o totoo bang um, hindi violation yung kanyang importation ng shipment. So that is the hearing proper. So the hearing officer will then issue an order of hearing and will commence the hearing of the case. So yung hearing na to hindi to yung katulad sa korte na trial type na magpapagtawag ng witness, i-cross-examine, hindi. Medyo simpler lang yung hearing na to. Okay? Pwede din virtual. 
Ang ginagawa namin, kung yung importer nagre-request ng virtual, then we conduct virtual hearing. Kasi yung legal service naman, yung lawyer sa legal service, hindi, hindi sa dami ng mga trabaho nila, sa dami ng case packets nila, hindi na yan nagtatravel sa court. So we do virtual hearing. Then after the hearing, pinapapasubmit natin ng position paper yung importer. Ano yung position paper? Yan yung document, yan yung, yan yung verified position paper na kung saan isistate ni importer na kanyong kanyang importation ay hindi violation. Katulad nung sinabi natin kanina, let us say, yung shipment ng food products, sinis ni Bureau of Customs kasi walang permit si importer. Walang clearance na natakita si importer. But later on, meron parang clearance si importer, hindi niya lang nasubmit at the time of Sub, at the time of lodgement or filing of the goods declaration. So, pwede niyang i-allege yan sa position paper. Yan yung written statements ni importer kung bakit hindi hindi liable for forfeiture yung kanyang shipment. Ano naman yung comment? Yan yung response ni government prosecutor doon sa statement ni importer. So, everything must be in writing. Kaya merong position paper at merong comment na C si government prosecutor. And then after the submission of the last pleading, so after the comment, pwede pang mag-reply si importer. Okay, after the submission of reply, then the case or the case shall be deemed submitted for decision. And the law division will then help the district collector in drafting the decision. So this si law division magda-draft yan ng decision para kay kung kay district collector at ipapa-approve niya kay district collector of customs. So, ito yung example ng warrant of seizure and detention. Okay, so this is a sample of a warrant of seizure and detention at the Port of Clark. So, kaya sinabi ko kanina yung seizure identification case number, yung Republic of the Philippines and yung caption versus the shipment at si pangalan ng claimant. And then, naka-address yan sa district commander. So, katulad dyan, naka-address yan sa District Commander ng Port of Clark. Okay? So that is addressed to the District Commander. Oh, ito yung mga facts and circumstances. Ito yung probable cause. Kung kailan dumating, anong barko, anong aeroplano, ano yung declaration, ano yung nakita. Okay? So that, those are the probable, those are the facts and circumstances constituting probable cause. Let's have this question. A 1 by 40 container suspected to contain illegal drugs passed through the port of Cebu with the port of Davao as its final destination. Upon its arrival at the port of Cebu or at the Cebu International Port, the district collector issued a warrant of seizure and detention. Is the district collector correct? Tama ba yung inisyo na warrant of seizure and detention? Papunta yung shipment sa Davao because Davao is the final destination. Pero bago siya pumunta ng Davao, dumaan muna siya sa Port of Cebu. Is the district collector of the Port of Cebu correct in issuing the warrant of seizure and detention? Okay, merong sumagot ng yes, merong sumagot na no. The answer is yes because the district collector of the Port of Cebu has territorial jurisdiction of their goods. Dumating nga sa Port of Cebu, di ba? Kahit Port of Davao yung kanyang final destination, eh dumating sa Cebu. So, merong territorial jurisdiction yung district collector ng Port of Cebu. Okay. The Port of Iloilo sees goods suspected to be illegal drugs. So, let us say, for example, yung Port of Iloilo naman, ngayon, nag-issue ng warrant of seizure and detention sa isang shipment because the shipment contains illegal drugs. Sino yung may custody ng goods? Ano, sino yung may custody ng goods? You're correct, Rosby, the regulating agency. Under Section 8 of CAO 10-2020, seized goods shall be turned over to regulating agency as required under existing laws. So, example, yung mga goods suspected to be illegal drugs shall be turned over to the custody of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. Why? Because they, under the law, has the custody for illegal drugs. Okay? Sila din yung may capability to check if the if the if that certain imported commodity or that certain imported goods ay illegal drugs. Okay. We move on to the next topic on appeal, okay? On appeal. So meron tong tatlong provisions, section 11, 26, 27 and 28. So let us say for example, 
the district collector of MICP rendered decision decreeing the forfeiture of the shipment. Diba sabi natin kanina, the forfeiture case, merong decision si district collector. So let us say the district collector rendered a decision. At sabi ni district collector, merong violation ng CMTA at kailangang i-forfeit imported goods. What then is the available remedy of Mr. C as the importer? Can anyone tell us what is the remedy available for Mr. C? Okay, the available remedy of Mr. C is appeal. Okay, kanino siya mag-a-appeal? Mag-a-appeal siya kay Commissioner of Customs. And how do you perfect an appeal? How do you make a valid appeal? Number one, you make the appeal within 15 days. For non-perishable goods, for five days, for perishable goods. Then you file your notice of appeal. Atong written notice of appeal para lang yung letter informing the district collector na mag-appeal kayo sa kanyang decision. Then you pay the appeal fee. Merong schedule yan, merong table yung magkano yung appeal fee. So sa district collector, magbibigay kayo ng written notice of appeal at magbabayad kayo ng appeal fee. Kay commissioner naman, memorandum of appeal. Atong memorandum of appeal nyo nakalagay dyan yung facts, kung ano yung nangyari sa importation ninyo. Kailan dumating, anong barkong sinakyan, kailan nag-issue ng WSD, okay? Kailan nag-decision sa district collector. And then you cite your allegations and your defenses kung bakit hindi tama yung pag-forfeit ng inyong shipment. I repeat, when you perfect an appeal, you have to file it within 15 days for non-perishable goods or 5 days for perishable goods. You file your notice of appeal to the district collector, pay the appeal fee in the district collector. So, me, so ibig sabihin doon sa port kung saan yung goods nyo, kung kaninong port na district collector nag-render ng decision. At magbigay kayo, you submit your memorandum of appeal to the Commissioner of Customs. Michi, there's a schedule for the appeal fee. You can check on the website of the Bureau of Customs. Okay, meron dyang schedule. Meron ka dyan tungkol sa magkano yung appeal fee. Okay. Let us say, for example, on March 15, 2023, the district collector of the Port of Manila rendered a decision for feeding the shipment of frozen meat products of Mr. X. On March 27, 2023, Mr. X filed an appeal. Is the appeal proper? Yes or no? What do you think? Tama ba yung pag-file ng appeal ni Mr. X? Yung decision, March 15, meat products, so ibig sabihin perishable goods, tapos nag-appeal siya on March 27. Is the appeal proper, yes or no? Okay, may mga sumagot ng no, walang sumagot ng yes. Okay, ang sagot nila, no, gahil, dapat within 5 days. Take note, okay, take note that the 5-day period or the period of appeal would count from the date that you received the decision. So, ang sagot dito, it depends on the date when Mr. X received that decision. So, under the CMT, Mr. X has a period of 5 days from receipt of the decision. Sa problem na to, walang binanggit kung kailan niya na-receive. Diba? So, the 5-day period starts to count from the day that you receive. Bakit date of receipt, sir? Bakit hindi date of decision? Bakit? Kasi nga, you will only know the decision once you receive the copy of the decision. And only when you receive the decision that you would know what actions or steps to make. Kasi kapag wala ka pang na-receive the decision, hindi mo naman alam kung panalo ka o talo ka. Kung, alam, kung nakuha mo na yung decision, dyan mo lang malalaman kung talo or mak panalo ka. At kung talo ka, then you know what your remedy is. And that is the remedy of appeal. So that starts to count from the date that you receive the decision. Okay. 
Okay, inulit lang yung question. So, okay. that's a bit. Mr. Mr. X received the decision on March 12, 2023 that ordered the forfeiture of the importation of steel bars. On March 27, 2023, he filed a notice of appeal and the memorandum of appeal to the district collector and paid the appeal fee. Is the appeal proper? Yes or no? Tama ba yung appeal? Is it a yes or a no? Ano nga ulit yung requirements sa pag-file ng appeal? Number one, meron kang notice of appeal. Kanino mo submit Kay district collector. What else? Magbayad ka ng appeal fee. Kanino ka magbabayad? Sa district collector. Sa district collection. In fact, it's in the collection division of the district, of the collection district or the port that decides your case. And number three, Memorandum of Appeal. Yung Memorandum of Appeal mo, ipapile mo yan kay Commissioner of Customs. Kaya ang sagot dito, the appeal is not proper. Why? Because the Memorandum of Appeal was not filed with the Commissioner of Customs. Under the problem, it was filed with the District Collector. Dapat ipile mo yan sa Commissioner of Customs. Okay, next problem. Mr. X filed the notice of appeal to the district collector and furnished the Commissioner of Customs with a memorandum on appeal questioning the district collector's decision received on March 9, 2023. On March 27, 2023, he paid the appeal fee. Is the appeal proper? May sumagot ng yes, may sumagot ng no. What do you think? Proper ba yung appeal? Why do you say no? Why do you say no? Bakit merong yes? Bakit no? Why do you think so? It is no because bakit no? Why do you think it is a no? Because the appeal fee was paid beyond the period to file an appeal. Diba natanggap niya March 9? So since hindi binanggit doon na perishable or non-perishable, so let us say, perishable siya. So kung na-receive mo ng March 9, then you have until March 24, di ba? To perfect an appeal. Dapat yung tatlong requirement ma-comply mo within March 24. Eh yung appeal fee, binayaran niya March 27 na. So the appeal fee was paid beyond the period to file an appeal. And what is the effect if an appeal is not properly filed? Okay, what is the effect if the appeal is not filed within the 15-day or 5-day period? What do you think so? The appeal shall be dismissed. Anong effect niyan kapag na-dismiss yung appeal mo? Yung decision ni district collector na gusto mong questioning, na gusto mong i-review, magiging final and executory. So wala ka nang magagawa, it becomes final and executory. Now, Diba sabi natin, magpa-file tayo ng appeal kay District Collector of Customs, magbayad ng appeal fee kay District Collector of Customs, magbigay ng notice of appeal kay District Collector of Customs, mag-file ng memorandum of appeal kay Commissioner of Customs. In this particular situation, the Commissioner of Customs has appellate jurisdiction sa decision ni District Collector. So sino yung magre-review ng decision? Si Commissioner. Anong gagawin ni Commissioner pag nasa kanya na yung in yung appeal, the commissioner shall review and decide the appeal from receipt of the records. Anong ibig sabihin ng receipt of the records? Under the CMTA, kapag nag-appeal yung isang importer, si, si district collector ay kailangan i-transmit yung records. Ipadala niya kay commissioner of customs yung records ng decision niya. That includes the warrant of seizure and detention, the decision of the district collector, the Goods declaration, kung meron mang entry na file, everything must be transmitted to the Commissioner of Customs. And from the receipt of the records, the Commissioner of Customs has a period of 30 days kung non-perishable or 15 days in case of perishable goods to decide. So meron siyang tatlong pong araw o labing limang araw na mag-decide. What if, sir, sa busy ni Commissioner dahil sa napakarami niyang ginagawa, hindi siya nakapag-decide? Anong effect nun? Anong effect nun? Mag-aantay lang ba si importer? No. The effect is that the decision of the district collector is deemed affirmed. So, ibig sabihin, nag-agree si Commissioner of Customs doon sa decision ni district collector. Okay. After for future proceedings, that another question. After for future proceedings, the district collector 
a report of Limay rendered a decision that the importation of Mr. F did not constitute a violation of the CMTA. Is the decision final? So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Merong yung shipment ni Mr. F sinis ni Bureau of Customs. Merong WSD. Nag-conduct ng hearing. Nag-conduct ng forfeiture proceeding. After that, nag si district collector na walang violation pala yung shipment niya. So, yung decision ba ni district collector, does it become final or not? What is the effect? Does it become final? Okay. Maraming sumagot dito ng no. Tama. No. The decision does not become final. Why? Because the decision that is adverse to the government, ibig sabihin favorable kay importer, is subject to automatic review by the Commissioner of Customs. It is subject to automatic review. Bakit siya subject to automatic review? Ganito kasi yan. Kapag si importer yung natalo, anong gagawin ni importer? Mag-a-appeal siya. So, ibig sabihin, there is a room for the decision to be reviewed. Pwedeng ma-review yung decision. Pwedeng malaman kung tama o mali yung decision ni district collector. Pero kapag panalo si importer, eh hindi na yan magre-review. Eh hindi na yan magpapa-appeal kasi panalo na siya, di ba? So, paano natin malalaman kung yung decision ni district collector ay tama o mali? Kung tama ba siya, naaayon ba sa batas o hindi naaayon sa batas? It is through the automatic review process. Okay? Automatic review process. In fact, the purpose of the automatic review power is mentioned in the case of Yao Kasin versus Commissioner of Customs. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, the owner of the goods cannot be expected to appeal the decision of the district collector. And a decision that is favorable to the exporter to the importer would correspondingly be unfavorable to the government. Di ba? May kaso yan. Dalawa lang talaga yung parties, gobyerno at saka importer. Kapag panalo yung importer, talo yung gobyerno. Kapag panalo naman yung gobyerno, talo naman yung importer. Dalawa lang talaga yung mangyayari. And it is to cure this situation that the provision for automatic review has been Okay, has been conceived. So, ang purpose nito, i-review kung tama ba yung decision ni district collector na i-release yung shipment. That is the purpose of the automatic review power. Now, kapag nasa kay commissioner na for automatic review, kailan siya magde-decide? Okay, 10 days in case of non-perishable goods, 10 day, uh, 30 days in case of non-perishable goods, at 10 days in case of perishable goods. Kanina sa sa appeal 30 at 15. Ngayon naman sa automatic review 30 at 10. Okay? On automatic review, the Commissioner of Customs agreed with the district collector that the shipment of Mr. G with an FOB value of 1.5 million did not violate any law. What is the effect of the decision of the Commissioner of Customs? So, si district collector, nag-decide siya. Nag-decide siya na panalo si importer. Okay? So, favorable kay importer. Not favorable to the government. So, automatic review, akyat kay commissioner. Sa level naman ni commissioner, sabi niya, tama naman yung decision ni district collector. Wala talagang violation. So, Nag-agree siya, nag-decide siya na tama si district collector. in niya yung decision ni district collector. At yung value ng shipment ay 1.5. What do you think is the effect of the decision of the Commissioner of Customs? Does it become executory or is it subject to review also? Okay? Makang sagot, it is immediately executory. Ha? Huh? Hindi ba dapat subject to review yan, sir? Eh, meron namang tanong. Let us assume that the FOB value is 15 million pesos. What is the effect of the decision of the Commissioner of Customs? Okay, the decision of the Commissioner of Customs on the goods with FOB value of 15 million pesos is subject to automatic review 
by the Secretary of Finance. Bakit yung una hindi siya subject to automatic review? Bakit yung pangalawa subject to automatic review? Dahil ito yung mga situations kung kailan mag-automatic review si Secretary of Finance. Una, kapag walang decision si Commissioner of Customs. So galing kay District Collector, automatic review kay Commissioner. Si Commissioner hindi nag-decide. So kapag walang decision, aakyat yan kay Secretary of Finance. Pero kapag merong decision si District si Commissioner of Customs, Aakyat lang yan kay, kay Secretary of Finance kapag yung decision niya ay favorable to the importer, ibig sabihin against the government at yung value niya ay 10 million pesos and more. Okay? 10 million pesos and more. So, ibig sabihin 10 million pesos at pataas. At pataas. So, yan yung dalawang situation lang aakyat kay Secretary of Finance under automatic review. At kailan, ilang araw ba meron si Secretary of Finance to decide? The Secretary of Finance shall decide the automatic review from receipt of the records. Ulitin ko, from receipt of the records. 30 days at 10 days. Pag automatic review pala, pareho yung period kay Commissioner at kay Secretary of Finance. 30 days kung non-perishable goods, 10 days naman kapag perishable goods. Okay. On appeal, the Commissioner of Customs renders an adverse decision to the importer. Nung nag-appeal si DC importer kay Commissioner of Customs, talo siya kay Commissioner of Customs. Anong remedy ni importer kapag talo siya kay Commissioner of Customs? Okay. So, mag-appeal siya kay Court of Tax Appeals, Division. CTA Division. Division muna ha, Division. Under a petition for review, under Rule 42. So, the district collector and the Commission of Customs found no violation on the importation of Mr. G with FOB value of 13 million pesos. So, umakyat kay Secretary of Finance kasi nga yung value niya is 13 million pesos, 10 million pesos and more. Tapos, yung Secretary of Finance rendered a decision against Mr. G. So, si district collector at si Commissioner agree siya kay Mr. G. Walang violation. Pero pagdating kay Secretary of Finance, meron palang violation. Ano yung remedy ni Mr. G? Yung remedy niya, appeal siya kay Court of Tax Appeals Division via a petition for review under Rule 42. Okay. So ano ba yung Court of Tax Appeals? That is a special court of limited jurisdiction kasi nga tax cases lang. In fact, yung pwede niyang i-review yung decision ni BIR Commissioner, BOC Commissioner, Secretary of Finance under automatic review, Decision ni DTI at DA Secretary on, on imposition of safeguard duty, on the, import, on the imposition of countervailing duty, okay, yung Central Board of Assessment Appeals and yung Regional Trial Court. Yung composition ng Court of Tax Appeals, one presiding justice at walong associate justices. It can work in bank or divisions. Okay, ano ba yung mga, okay, ito, significant doctrines. There are two significant doctrines here. Doctrine of primary jurisdiction at doctrine of exhaustion of administrative remedies. Ano ba yung doctrine of primary jurisdiction? Ibig sabihin yan, bago ka pumunta sa hukuman, tampusin mo muna yung administrative proceeding. So, sa Bureau of Customs, meron siyang primary jurisdiction, di ba? So, hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa korte. Tapusin mo muna yung sa Bureau of Customs. So, that is... Um, another doctrine is the doctrine of exhaustion of administrative remedies. So before a party is allowed to seek intervention of the court, dapat ay avail niya muna yung administrative processes afforded him. Yung doctrine of primary jurisdiction could also be defined as that doctrine which states that the, the courts cannot arrogate unto itself the exercise of a jurisdiction or the exercise or the Cognizance of a case which is under the jurisdiction of an administrative body. Ano ba yung N-Bank tsaka division, sir? Maraming nagtatanong, ano ba yung N-Bank and division? Kasi nga, sabi natin kanina, kapag mag a ka sa decision ni Commissioner of Customs, doon ka muna sa division. So, ito yon, Yung buong N-Bank, yung buong siyam, kasi isang ju presiding justice at walong associate justices. So, that is the entire court. Kapag sinabi natin division, tigtatatlo lang sila. Okay? So that is the first division, second division, and third division. So kapag merong decision si, si Commissioner of Customs, 
aakyat ka sa, sa Court of Tax Appeals pero dito muna sa division. Huwag ka muna sa NBAC. Okay. So ano yung jurisdiction ng Court of Tax Appeals? Decision ni Commissioner of Customs at decision ni Secretary of Finance. Kanino ka magpa-file? Sa division muna. Via a petition for review under Rule 42. Okay? Kailan ka magpa-file? Within 30 days from receipt of the decision of the Commissioner of Customs or Secretary of Finance. Now, sa level ni division, sa level ng CTA division, let us say, natalo ka sa decision ng Court of Tax Appeals Division. Anong gagawin mo? What is your next remedy? Your next remedy would be to file a motion for reconsideration or new trial within the same division. And you have a period of 15 days from the notice of that decision. So what if after your motion for reconsideration, talo ka pa rin sa division? What is your next remedy? Yung next remedy mo, pumunta ka na sa NBank via a petition for review under Rule 43. Okay? So division muna, nag-decide yung division, talo ka, you file an MR. Nag-decide yung division, talo ka pa rin sa MR, mag-file ka na ng petition for review papunta sa NBank. Okay. The Commissioner of Customs decided against Miss A, who then appealed the decision to the Court of Tax Appeals First Division. The CTA Division ruled against Miss A, held the decision of the Commissioner of Customs. What is the available remedy of Miss A? Nag-appeal siya kay Commissioner of Customs, talo siya. So pagkatalo niya, nag-appeal siya sa Court of Tax Appeals Division, talo pa rin siya. Anong next remedy ni Miss A? The remedy of Miss A would be to file a motion for reconsideration or motion for new trial before the division. Yung division pa, ha? Yung division pa. Okay. What if dininay yung MR ni Miss A? Anong remedy niya? Doon ka na sa NBAC through a petition for review okay, within 15 days from receipt of the decision. Let us see. Okay. Talo ka sa NBank. Pagdating sa NBank, talo ka pa rin. Ano yung remedies mo? Dalawa na yung remedies mo. Either you file a motion for reconsideration before the CTA NBank within 15 days from receipt of the judgment or mag-appeal ka na sa Supreme Court within 15 days from notice of judgment. At yung mode of appeal mo ay petition for review via certiorari under Rule 45. So review ko lang ha, recap ko lang. Saan tayo magsisimula? Sa district collector. Kapag si district collector nag-render ng decision against the importer, anong remedy ni importer? Appeal. Okay, appeal. Ano yung requirements for appeal? Ano yung requirements for appeal? Tatlo. Magbayad ka ng appeal fee kay district collector. So, ibig sabihin magbayad ka doon sa collection district. Pangalawa, mag-file ka ng Notice of Appeal kay District Collector of Customs at mag-file ka ng Memorandum of Appeal kay Commissioner of Customs. etong tatlong to dapat mong magawa within 15 days or 5 days in case of, na of perishable goods. Okay. Pagdating kay Commissioner of Customs, talo ka pa rin. Anong remedy ni importer? Kapag talo pa rin si importer sa level ni Commissioner of Customs, ang remedy niya would be to file a okay, file a petition for review before the Court of Tax Appeals Division. Kapag talo pa rin si importer sa Court of Tax Appeals Division, anong remedy niya? File ka ng motion for reconsideration doon pa rin sa division kung saan ka natalo. Kapag dininay ng division yung iyong motion for reconsideration or motion for new trial, anong remedy mo? Mag-file ka na ng petition for review doon sa Court of Tax Appeals and Bank. Kapag talo ka sa end Bank, Court of Tax Appeals and Bank, dalawa yung pwede mong pagtipilian. Either mag-file ka ng MR sa Court of Tax Appeals and Bank or dumiretso ka na sa Supreme Court via a petition for review on certiorari. Okay. Now, ulitin ko, recap naman tayo sa automatic review. Kapag si district collector nag-render ng decision favorable to the importer, 
ang mangyayari aakyat yan kay Commissioner of Customs through the automatic review. Sa level ni Commissioner of Customs, dalawa yung pwedeng mangyari. Either dahil sa kung ano man yung reason, hindi nag-decide si Commissioner of Customs or nag-decide si Commissioner of Customs at at uh, at nag-agree siya kay District Collector of Customs. If hindi siya nag-decide, anong mangyayari? Aakyat yan kay Secretary of Finance. Pero kapag nag-decide si Commissioner of Customs at nag-agree siya kay district collector, ibig sabihin, favorable kay importer, dalawa yung pwedeng mangyari. Kapag yung value niya ay 10 million pesos or more, FOB or FCA, aakyat yan kay Secretary of Finance. Pero kapag yung value niya, FOB or FCA, ay bababa sa 10 million pesos, it becomes immediately executory. Hindi na yan aakyat kay, uh, kay Secretary of Finance. So that ends my discussion this morning. I am now open for your questions and points of clarification. Sige. So I intentionally make it a point na one hour and a half lang yung aking presentation so that we could give more time for your questions and answers. I'll give back the floor to Chloe for the open forum or for the question and answer portion. So, thank, that's a very informative lecture, Attorney and Zaya. We are really privileged to have you here today. I know we have so much lessons and knowledge that we need to know about as we conquer our journey to success in this field that we choose. But what you have shared with us today is really significant and especially for the freshmen here. It is undoubtedly true that each and every one of us here today has obtained or gained new knowledge, thanks to your abundance of expertise and experience in this field. So once again, the PSCAS EAC Manila appreciates you coming, attorney, and providing your knowledge to our audience. And now, it is the turn of our dear attendees to ask their inquiries or questions to attorney and Daya. For the question and answer session, you are all free to ask questions by raising your hand or using the chat feature to ask questions and engage in a meaningful dialogue. So again, you can, uh, you can freely ask questions na po by typing it on chat box or raising hand po. Okay, there's a question here. Is there an instance where there is a LOA without an MO? So ano ba yung LOA? Okay, LOA refers to the letter of authority. Ano ba yung letter of authority? Yan ho yung authorization na ibinibigay ni Commissioner of Customs for a customs officer to exercise the power, the visitorial power. Yung visitorial power po under Section 224 of the CMTA. Ano ba yung nakapaloob sa Section 224? Sa Section 224 ho, pwede ho, binibigyan ho ng kapangyarihan yung Commissioner of Customs o kahit sinong customs officer na ino-authorize ni Commissioner of Customs to go uh, to visit a place where imported goods are openly kept for storage. Ibig sabihin, storage siya, warehouse siya, storing place siya for imported goods or to a place where imported goods are offered for sale. Saan siya binibenta? So pwedeng tindahan. So warehouse or tindahan, kung saan binibenta o saan tinatago. Ino-authorize ni Commissioner of Customs yung isang customs officer. Puntahan mo yun. For example, the Commissioner of Customs, oh, pumunta ka sa isang mall na ganito. Tingnan mo nga kung meron silang mga imported goods at kung meron man silang imported goods, tanungin mo nga kung nagbabayad ba sila ng lawful duties and taxes. Yung authorization na binabanggit sa Section 224 is the letter of authority. Yan yung letter of authority. Ano naman yung mission order? Yung mission order ay isang order na binibigay ni Commissioner of Customs in writing yan, written order, na nag-authorize ng isang customs officer na pumunta o mag-operate outside of customs premises. Now, under CAO 3-2019, yung CAO on the Exercise of Police Authority, requirement na kapag merong letter of authority, kapag pupunta si, si customs officer, to visit and inspect a place where imported goods are openly offered for sale or kept in storage, dapat kasama yung mission order. Bakit kasama yung mission order? Kasi nga lalabas siya sa opisina ng Bureau of Customs. Kapag lalabas ka sa opisina ng Bureau of Customs, kailangan mo ng mission order para yung pagpunta mo, paglabas mo, pag-operate mo, ay authorized, ay ina-allow 
Okay? So, di ba, lalabas ka ng Bureau of Customs, mission order. Pupunta ka sa inspection, mag-inspect ka ng, ng tindahan o ng storage facility, there is a letter of authority. So, the two must come. Mission order and the letter of authority must be must be issued by the Commissioner of Customs. Okay? There's a question here. Pwede ba? Okay, I hope I've answered your question, Kit. Okay? So, dapat merong LOA and MO, mission order. May tanong dito from Charles. Pwede bang makialam o makaabot sa Senate or sa President of the Philippines yung appealed cases? Under the CMTA and the rules of the Court of Tax Appeals, hindi ho makaka, hindi na ho yan aabot kay President of the Philippines. Kasi kapag nag-decide na si Commissioner of Customs, Ang remedy na, ang merong jurisdiction is the Court of Tax Appeals. Wala hong jurisdiction yung Senate of the Philippines. Wala din hong jurisdiction yung President of the Philippines. Okay, merong tanong dito. I, uh, merong charter party. Ano yung charter party? Ito yung agreement where a certain vessel is borrowed by another person. For example, uh, Kailan na nating mag-name na lang ng barko para mas maintindihan nyo. Okay, let's have um, Sulpicio Lines, okay? Or ang tawag na ngayon is Philippine Spa, Philippine Span Asia Career Corporation. Okay, so merong barko. Okay. Yung barko niyang pagmamayari ng shipping lines. Gagamitin niya ng isang tao for whatever reason. Gagamitin niya yung barko. So that is a charter party agreement. Yung charter party... <clears throat> Yung charter party, sorry. Merong dalawang types. Merong dalawang types yung charter party. Either it's a voyage, voyage or time charter party agreement or yung bare boat. Kapag bare boat, it is as if na yung taong nagrent rent nung barko, siya yung may-ari. Okay, siya na yung may-ari. And it becomes a private carrier. Okay. Kasi under the CMTA, kapag common carrier, hindi siya liable for forfeiture under customs laws. Except when there is knowledge or participation of the owner of the vessel or the mass or the agent of the vessel. Okay. So kapag walang, like, for example, yung mga barko, okay? yung mga vessels engage in the importation of goods, yung evergreen, yung APL, yung MERS, hindi naman sila discriminatory when it comes to the import when it comes to the transportation of the goods. Kahit sino, basta willing kang magbayad, capable ka to pay, you can bring your container on border vessel and transport them to wherever destination you want. Pero kapag private carrier, hindi ka nag-open to pub to public. Okay, it's only for your own use. And if it's a private carrier under the law, under this MTA, liable siya for forfeiture. So if the charter part is a voyage charter, may the vessel be considered as property subject to forfeiture. Under the customs law, uh, it is still considered a, a common carrier. So it's a defense available to the it's a defense available to the owner of the vessel. Okay? Sa bare boat charter lang, magiging uh, magiging private carrier si shipping as uh, si a vessel or aircraft or the transport carrier. Okay, there's a question here. You mentioned earlier uh, concerning appeal on perishable goods. A uh, question po, what if late na na-receive yung notice at yung perishable goods eh, magde-decay na o magde-deteriorate na? Okay. That is one remedy available to the importer. Nakasaad yan sa CMTA na if the goods subject of seizure or forfeiture proceeding is a non, is a perishable is perishable in nature, pwede siyang mag-request kay district collector na ibenta yung kanyang shipment at yung pinagbentahan i-held i-hold in trust ni BOC. Okay, para hindi naman masayang kasi kung for example, yung product mo ay milk at kapag nasira yan, wala na yung value of no commercial value to you. So kapag natal, nanalo ka, wala ka nang marirecover kasi sira na nga yung gatas mo, sira na nga yung produkto mo. So you are allowed under the law 
to request the district collector to cause the sale. Okay, i-auction, i-benta yung inyong shipment while pending yung inyong forfeiture case. At yung pinagbentahan niya, i-hold mo na yan, i-kikit mo na yan ni Bureau of Customs at kapag nanalo ka, isa sa uli yan ni Bureau of Customs. At please, hindi hindi naman uh, hindi na nga available yung gatas mo, pero at least na-recover mo naman yung value nung shipment mo. That is allowed under the CMPA. No, hindi liable si Bureau of Customs. Bureau of Customs will not be liable in that case. Kasi it is your right. It is your right. Eh, dapat ikaw mag-exercise nung available remedy mo under the CFA. Uh, kailan po ba applicable yung partial seizure of the shipment? So Jericho, there's a good question. So we refer to Customs Administrative Order Number 10-2020. If the district collector believes that, okay, nandyan yan, sa CAO 10-2020, I refer to the specific provision so that you can you can read it after the this after the lecture. In section 6.2 of the CAO 10-2020, nakasaad dyan, if the offense relates only to a part or a portion of the shipment, only that part may be seized. Example, yung buong shipment Let us say, yung buong shipment ay merong mix, merong personal effects, meron din namang sasakyan. So, yung dineclare niya, personal effects lang. So, mayroong misdeclaration doon sa sasakyan. So, pwedeng isease ni Bureau of Customs yung sasakyan lang because there is partial seizure of the shipment. Pwede din yung buong shipment yung isease ni BOC, yung personal effects tsaka yung sasakyan. Because provided ang condition dito, pwede yung partial shipment, a partial seizure as long as the district collector is satisfied that the remainder of the shipment was not used directly or indirectly in the commission of the offense. Okay? So for example, yung sasakyan itinago sa lo sa loob at yung ginamit na pangtakip niya o pantago niya is yung personal effects. Then the district collector can say that the personal effects should also be seized because it was used to conceal the motor vehicle or yung car na na-misdeclare doon sa loob ng container. Pero kapag yung, yung pagkapwesto naman ng shipment ay yung sasakyan yung nasa labas, nasa harapan, yung personal effects yung nasa loob, so hindi, ibig sabihin hindi siya ginamit para i-conceal yung sasakyan, then partial seizure can be, uh, can be made on the shipment. Okay, there's a question here from Janika. Okay. Uh, the issue here is in section 214, yung exercise of police authority. There are three persons who are authorized to exercise police authority in section 214. We have the officials of the Bureau of Customs, let there be the uh, the members and officers of law enforcement agencies when authorized by the Commissioner of Customs. And number three, the officers of the Bureau of Internal Revenue when it involves the payment of internal revenue taxes. Ang question ni Janica is, what if yung goods ay tax exempt? Pwede pa rin bang mag-exercise si BIR ng police authority? My answer is yes. Why? Because exemption or not is an issue to be answered by the BIR. Paano ma-verify ni BIR kung exempted talaga siya? Diba? It's only BIR that can say that the, the exempted siya because BIR has the authority under the tax code. So kahit walang babayaran para ma-determine ni BIR kung totoo ba siyang exempted or not, BIR can exercise police authority. For as long as yung allegation or yung claim ni BIR that it is exercising the authority under the tax code, whether exempted siya or not. Kasi part of the exercise of police authority is to check whether the imported goods are really subject to tax or are really exempted from value-added tax. Thank you, Janica. Other questions? Can customs auction off seize goods? Um, that is one of the modes of disposition. So, depende yan. Depende. If yung goods naman ay pwedeng ibenta, ibibenta yan ni customs. Pero kung yung goods ay regulated, then the mode of disposition would depend on the recommendation of the regulatory agency. For example, pagkain, 
nasis siya kasi walang permit from the FDA. Bakit kailangan ng permit? Para malaman natin kung yung pagkain na yan safe for human consumption. Eh wala nga siyang permit, di ba? So hindi natin alam kung safe siya for human consumption. And if we are doubtful if it is safe for human consumption, why should we sell it up? Bakit natin kailangan i-sell off? Bakit, why do we need to sell the goods off? Di ba? Kung hindi nga natin sure na fit siya for human consumption, so hindi natin ibibenta yan. Depende yan sa regulatory agency. Kapag sinabi ng FDA, huwag niyong ibenta kasi uh, bulok na siya. Hindi natin ibibenta. Then, we proceed to the mode of disposition on condemnation. Okay? Thank you, Renz, for your question. Sir, what are the grounds for challenging the validity of a seizure by, of goods by customs official? Okay. Pwede mong i-question yung validity by raising emotion, uh, by raising the quashal, okay? The quashal of the C, the warrant of seizure and detention. And under CAO 10-2020, tatlo yung instances for a quashal of the warrant of seizure and detention. Ano yung tatlong instances for the quashal of the WSD? Una, when the imported goods have been seized pursuant to the visitorial power under section 224. At nakapagkita at na, na, di ba, ang purpose ng section 224 ay tingnan ni Bureau of Customs kung nababayaran ba ng tama yung duties and taxes doon sa imported goods. Okay. Sinis ni Bureau of Customs kasi nga walang naipakita na proof of payment of duties and taxes yung importer. And then later on, na meron ng proof of payment ng duties and taxes yung importer. Then, that is a ground for quashal of the warrant of seizure and detention. Another reason, if yung district collector na nag-issue ng warrant of seizure and detention does not have territorial jurisdiction over the location of the goods. That's also a ground for challenging the validity of the seizure of the goods. And third reason, if the ground for the issuance of the warrant of seizure and detention is that the is that the shipment, okay, shipment was regulated, and at the time of the lodgement of the goods declaration or the processing of the goods declaration, wala pang may pakitang license, permit, or or authority si importer. And later on, nakasecure na siya, nakapag-secure na siya ng permit, authority, or license from the regulatory agency, then that is also a ground for the quashal of the warrant of seizure and detention. So what are the other grounds? You, well, Another ground would be the importation does not constitute a violation. Kasi sa WSD naman yan, Charvimar, makikita mo kung ano yung grounds for the violation, for the seizure of the goods. Like for example, ilalagay niya the importation constitute a violation of the Food and Drugs Act. It constitute a violation of the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. So dun mo i-allege doon sa inyong memorandum of appeal or sa position paper mo that the importation does not constitute a violation of any of these laws. Okay. Yes, you're correct, Charles. Held in escrow. That is the term. Okay? Held in trust by the Bureau of Customs. Sir, yung sa pag-conduct ng inspection sa alert order, 48 hours rin po bas, regardless of perishable? Yes. Okay? I always tell this to my students. In the examin the conduct of the examination of shipment subject to alert order, the CMTE does not distinguish if it is perishable or non-perishable. So, 48 hours applies both either perishable or non-perishable goods. Nagsisimula lang yung distinction whether perishable or not. Um, uh, nagsisimula yan sa pag-submit ni, 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 ni examining officer ng kanyang recommendation kay district collector. So, sa examining officer has a period of 48 hours, 24 hours to submit the recommendation. But in the conduct of the examination, it applies to both either, either perishable or non, same rin yung, yung hours na binibigay, 48 hours. Okay, other questions. What happens if custom seizes illegal drugs or controlled substances? Turn over kay PDEA. And then PDEA will then have jurisdiction over the imported goods or over the suspected uh, illegal drugs. Saan po map mapapunta yung proceeds kapag po naibenta yung perishable goods? Okay. Saan siya mapupunta? Trust fund ni Bureau of Customs, hindi forfeiture funds. Kasi yung forfeiture funds under Section 11, 
section ba yun? 1151 or 1153? 1151. Yung sa forfeiture funds kasi, dyan lang mapupunta yung proceeds ng auction na hin ah, for example, auction ng impliedly abandoned goods. Under the CMTA, merong period. Pwede pa yung kunin ng owner ng impliedly abandoned goods yung proceeds na naitira. Kapag wala na, that's the time it, 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 ilalagay siya sa forfeiture funds. So ano man yung natira after deducting the charges under the CMTA, yung customs duties, yung value added tax, yung storage charges, RST charges, expenses for the appraisal, expenses for the advertisement, and all others. Kapag meron pang natira, dyan lang yan papasok sa forfeiture fund. Pero yung, <clears throat> yung proceeds dun sa inoction for perishable goods while the forfeiture case is pending, hindi yan sa forfeiture fund. It is a special separate trust fund yan kasi pwedeng ibalik yan ni Bureau of Customs kapag na-decide, kapag na-determine na walang violation yung importation ni importer. <clears throat> Sir, ano po yung pagkakaiba ng prima facie evidence and substantial evidence? Yung prima facie evidence, the, uh, the meaning of prima facie is on its face. So, saan mo mababasa yung prima facie evidence? Yung definition ng fraud. ba? Diba? Sabi doon sa CMTA, there is prima facie evidence of fraud if the discrepancy in duties and taxes on what is declared and what is found exceeds 30%. Okay, 30%, okay, 30% or more. Yan yung pagkakasabi sa batas. So, prima facie ibig sabihin kapag merong discrepancy, kahit hindi pa napatunayan na merong fraud, the law presumes it to be fraud. Yan yung prima facie. No evidence is required as long as merong discrepancy at yung discrepancy ay 30% and above, then there is fraud. Ang substantial evidence, iba naman yan. It's, as prima facie evidence is not a quantum of evidence. Ang substantial evidence is a quantum of evidence. So, hindi pwede yung presumption lang doon sa substantial evidence. Dapat meron talagang ebidensya na may papakita kay Bureau of Customs na yung importation constitutes a violation or it does not constitute a violation of our laws. Okay. Ano po ba yung mauna? Determination of probable cause, then issuance of WSD or WSD muna bago yung determination of probable cause. Mauna muna yung determination of probable cause. Kasi bago mag-WSD, dapat merong probable cause. It is provided under the CMTA that the district collector shall issue a warrant of seizure detention upon the determination of the existence of probable cause. So kaya nga makikita mo sa WSD, merong inalagay, this office finds probable cause. Probable cause muna bago mag-WSD kasi yung basis mo sa WSD ay yung probable cause na nadidetermine ni district collector. Okay. Who has the power to quash an issue WSD? Yung district collector ho. Yung district collector has the power to quash the WSD. Kasi dun ka naman magpa-file ng motion to quash before the district collector. In fact, may period yan where the district collector has to decide the motion to quash the WSD. Okay? Nakalagay dito, section 14.1.3 of CAO 10-2020. The motion to quash shall be resolved by the district collector within 15 working days from the date of submission of the said matter for resolution. Okay? And in case the district collector allows the quash of the WSD, subject siya to clearance from the Commissioner of Customs. Okay, meron pa ba tanong? On regulating agencies, uh, hindi. Walang cow or CMO yan because the regulating agencies are the ones providing for the for the administrative order or department order on the regulatory agencies. But if you want to know what goods are subject to regulation, you can check the PNTR website. Ito yung website niya, yung PNTR. PNTR.gov.ph Okay? Do we have other questions? Okay, what for future cases may not be subject to compromise? Nasa, nakasad yan sa CMTA. It cannot be subject to compromise if, okay, if ever express abandonment is filed by the importer for imported goods pending, ay, sir, Mike, good morning po, Prof. Professor Mike, 
If ever express abandonment is filed by the importer for imported goods pending final assessment and shipment, it has no FDA CPR. If ever approved by the district collector, is the importer free from any liability? Uh, no, sir. No prof. Hindi po. Because the CMTA provides that and the cow on the express abandonment or cow 17-2019 provides that the liability only as far as payment of duties and taxes is is absorbed okay the liability only for the payment ang mawawala in abandonment but the liability for civil criminal or administrative aspect when it comes to the violation of the customs laws in the importation of the goods is not included ang pagkasaad huyan sa cow number 30 uh, 17-2019 let us check cow 17-2019 paano ba yan sinabi sa cow 17-2019 it is found in section at least pagkatapos ng lecture na to pwede nyong basahin yung mismong section Section 4.5.7 Section The foregoing shall be without prejudice to the possible criminal liability of the importer, its officers, and employees for prohibited or restricted importations subject of abandonment. So, hindi siya uh, not not because the goods were expressly abandoned, hindi na rin wala ng liability si importer sa importation because this is without prejudice to whatever criminal, administrative, or civil liability that may be a judge as far as the importation is concerned. Okay. Sir, what if the aggrieved party wants to file? Do we still have time? Play uh, Chloe, do we still have time? Baka maubos na yung time. Yes. Sa pag... Well, mga naman po. Until 12 naman po tayo. Ah, okay. Sige. Baka yung iba nagugutom na kaya nag-leave na. So, what if the aggrieved party wants to file an appeal? Nauna siyang magbayad ng appeal fee within 15 days but late na nakapag-file ng written notice of appeal. Ah, hindi. Kasi yung tatlong yung tatlong requirements must be filed within 15 days. So kapag nag-delay ka ng isa, walang the appeal is not properly filed. Okay, kailan po available yung settlement by fine or redemption during the pendency of the forfeiture case? So kapag nasa level pa ni district collector, naghihir pa lang yung forfeiture case, pwede nang mag-express ng intention si importer for the settlement by payment of fine or redemption. Kapag nasa appeal naman, nasa level na ni Commissioner of Customs, then settlement by redemption of the goods. Okay, import A as a shipment of POM. The answer is no. The answer is no. My 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 belief is that the answer is no. Why? Because your failure to pay the duties and taxes of a prior shipment is not a ground for the seizure of the goods under Section 1113 of the CMT. Wala naman sinabi doon na uh, imported goods of an importer who, pre who previously fa or failed to pay the duties and taxes, wala namang nakalagay sa Section 1113. So, I believe that the failure to pay or an outstanding account by the by an importer does not constitute a by a ground for the seizure or forfeiture of a shipment for the issuance of a WSD. Okay. Uh, Glenn, yung express abandonment and implied abandonment, you can check. I have a I have a lecture video on that, so you may check kasi kung dito baka hahaba yung ating discussion. It's another topic. Okay, kulang yung time natin to discuss on express and implied abandonment. Kindly visit my page. Okay, meron dun hong link for the discussion on express and implied abandonment. Okay? So, I think we're done. 
So 